God bless you guys. God bless you guys. I am Jamar Grimsley and this is Get Right With God. I pray that you all are doing well today. I kind of miss you guys, you know, even though it's been a few days, <laughs> only a few days. It seemed like it's been longer, <laughs> but I pray that you guys are doing well. Um, we are about to get into another fast. Oh, yes. How many are ready to fast? <laughs> How many are ready to fast? How many are ready to fast, you guys? This one is not as easy now. Um, and I, 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 when I heard the instructions, I said, Lord, are you sure? Because, you know, sometimes you just want to be sure because it seems you would think it would be at least the same. Or, well, it's the same. It's the same. But this time, instead of three days, he says seven days. <laughs> I hope you're all ready. I hope you're all are ready. But the theme that he gave me is, is that... Um, this one is change me, God, make me more like you. Change me, God, make me more like you, right? So God is going to change your, the way that you, maybe your behavior or, or the way that you um, act sometimes, the way that you, uh, your, 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 your speech, you know, your attitude, like things like that. He's going to change those things. He said, change me, God. Make me more like you is the title, is the title. Change me, God, make me more like you, which is like you're asking him, I need you to change me, God, so that I may be more like you, right? And um, these are, these are what, this is what I heard, right? It says that, um, oh, let me tell you again, no meat, no meat, no meat, no meat, and only drink water. No meat and only drink water. It's the same exact fast as we did last time. I don't know if you guys did it before, but no meat and only drink water, right? And it's, the theme is change me, God, make me more like you, right? So. That's like kind of like the request or what, what the fast is supposed to do. It's going to change us and make us more like him, right? Okay, and it says, he's given many of you the gift of discernment of spirits. Discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits, right? As far as what I know about this spiritual gift, I, I guess it's one that you really, really need, but you may not think you need it, or you, you could be in danger around you, but you just won't know it. Let me see. I wrote it down, the exact definition. I kind of know what it is, but it says discerning of spirit is the gift that should be most desired. It should be most desired. And I just, I wonder why it should be most desired because it's the one, it's the only one where you could truly see the enemy working. You see what I'm saying? Many times he's working behind the scenes. Like you will not see the devil. You won't know what he's doing. But many times you can see the spirit in people. Like you'll recognize, nah, this is a demon in this person. This person is evil. This person is against me. But you won't really know that unless you have the gift of discernment. So um, I guess God is saying that it says this should be desired the most because the devil is always going to fight us. So if you can recognize you got a foot hold, you, you got a, you, 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 uh, 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 ahead of him. You see what I'm saying? If you could just recognize and see his planet. Okay. Well, anyway, it says the ability to distinguish good and bad, right from wrong, real and fake. Um, uh, when you hear a story, you are able to tell, it says divine enablement, right? When you hear a story, you are able to tell if it's right or wrong. You can filter through the story. You can know if someone is operating under an evil spirit or the Holy Ghost, right? So it says divine enablement, enablement, which is, is from heaven. This help is from heaven, right? So, so the Lord is enabling you to be able to see what others can't see. You know what I'm saying? You'll be able to tell a demon from a, uh, a witch. Uh, you, you see, witches can come in plain sight. Like, they'll just come just like me and you, and you would never even think it. But with the gift of discernment, you'll just know it. You know what I'm saying? You'll know it, that this is a witch. Or you'll know that this is a demon. Or this person is up to no good. And they're trying to work behind the scenes, evil things. They're doing evil things. They're planning. Like you could just see the demon in the person. So it says that gift is the one that should be desired the most. And I agree. I agree now. I agree. That's a very powerful one right there. So he says he's going to give many of you the gift 
of discerning of spirits, right? He's going to give many of you the gifts of discerning of spirits during this seven days fast, right? And it says he's going to deliver many of you from laziness and procrastination. Laziness and procrastination. I don't know who that's for. But he said he's going to deliver many of you from laziness and procrastination because it's stopping you from doing his will, right? It's certain things you may... Uh, plan on doing, but you keep putting it off and then you never end up doing it. It could be as easy as wanting to read the Bible. Like today, I'm going to just pray today. I'm going to make sure that I stay in, um, you know, in my Bible. I'm going to read my Bible today, but you keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it's something that you have to do that the Lord is that, you know, you need to do, but it's like, you keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And then you get lazy and you know what I'm saying? So he says, I'm going to be delivering you Many of you from laziness and procrastination. And you'll know if this is for you. <laughs> so if you're suffering with that, then it says, um, many of you do things in secret that no one knows about. If you are faithful to this fast, I will break those strongholds off of your life, right? So what is the secret sin? Maybe something that you smoking or drinking or masturbating or it's something secret that nobody knows about. And you're just dealing with it and doing it in secret. You see what I'm saying? But he says, if you be faithful to this fast, right? He said, then I'll go ahead and break those strongholds off of your life, right? So God is trying to help somebody right here. Like he's trying to help somebody right here, right here, right here. But he's requiring you to be faithful, right? Right? He said, you be faithful on this fast. I will break those strongholds off of your life. So when he says faithful to the fast, you have to do it as he's telling you to do it. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's like he's not going to, this, this one is a conditional. Like, this is conditional right here, right? He says, if you be faithful to the fast, right? He said, he will break those strongholds off of your life. So this one right here is conditional. So if you do it the way that he's saying and you do it for the amount of time that he's saying, no meat, only water, seven days from six to six. If you do it faithfully, just like he the rules are, then he said, for those, if you do it faithful, I will break those strongholds off of your life. Because what it's going to show is that you're serious, that you want to be free from this. So it's like, okay, God gives me something to do. Once I do it, then I receive. You see what I'm saying? Like, so this one is conditional, right? It says, many of you have bad attitudes and get easily aggravated and angry, right? So are you one that, that, that's just, you know, like angry quick and you get easily aggravated, like, man, get out of my face. Leave me alone. I'm tired. Like you just get easily aggravated. You can't take much, I guess much foolishness or anything that like, you just ready to kind of like black out on people all the time. Like, you know, you get so easily aggravated, and angrily easy. Some of you got bad attitudes. You know what I'm saying? And so he's saying, I'll break those. He said, many of you have bad attitudes and get get angry and aggravated easily. Right? He says, during this fast, I am going to increase your patience. Right? So he's going to break those things off of you. Right? And he said, I'm going to increase your patience. Right? I'm going to increase your patience. He said, because where I am taking you, you are going to need that, right? You're going to need patience. You're going to need patience. You're not going to be able to, where he wants to bring you, you're not going to be able to have a bad attitude and be nasty or rude or get easily aggravated or angry. He says, I'm going to, um, I'm going to give you patience, right? He said, I'm going to give you patience, right? Because where I'm taking you, you're going to need this, right? You're going to need patience. So I don't know you know, what God is about to do for somebody, but he's going to break those things. Because the name of the fast is change me, God, make me more like you, right? So God is patient. God is loving. God is kind. You see what I'm saying? So if you got a bad attitude and you always get angry easy and you know what I'm saying? Like you just, just easily aggravate, like those things are not God. So he says, change me, God, make me more like you is the title, right? It says, so he's going to give you patience because he says where he's taking you, you are going to need that, right? And so um, it said, there will be many testimonies of those who do it and complete it faithfully, right? So for those that do it, right? And you guys are listening right now and, you know, 
So you can make up in your mind if you're going to do it or if you're not going to do it, if you're going to be faithful to it or if you're not going to be faithful to it. But he said those that do it faithfully, he will give them more test. Many, he said, I will give them more testimonies, right? Those who complete it faithfully, right? And um, so that's, that's, that's it, you guys. And I, I hear that um, he said also stop praying for just yourselves, but pray for others, your family members, right? Don't just pray for yourself, but pray for others, your family members. Don't just pray for yourself, but pray for others, family members, right? So some people are probably just kind of selfishly praying everything for themselves. But he's saying pray for other people during this fast because your prayers are going to hit you know what I'm saying? Your prayers are going to be more effective as you're fasting, right? And you say, don't, again, don't just fast, but you got to make sure you pray along with the fasting, right? They go hand in hand. Don't just fast, but you have to pray because it's not a diet, right? So again, you guys, what you want to do is write out a few things that you want the Lord to do for you, that you need the Lord to do for you, right? Write them out. When you first wake up, recite it. When you go to bed, recite it. Well, this is what I'm desiring for you on this fast. This, I'm doing this fast for this right here. This is what I'm desiring. Let me let me give you some rules for fasting, right? Just something I found on the internet, right? It says it gives you a deeper intimacy with God, right? It says it answers to fervent prayer. Answers fervent prayer. So what are those prayers that you just kind of cry out to God? Like you really need God to move on this thing like he's going to answer that when you fast and pray right it says it develops humility before god because a lot of times you guys a lot of us are prideful and big-headed high-minded self-righteous and we don't even know it right so there's certain things that you do just to humble yourself like you're obeying the word of god and you're just it's kind of like you're you're sacrificing that for god you see what i'm saying and so it, 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 it proves a humility and it, it says it develops humility, right? And you gain wisdom and understanding. You gain wisdom and understanding, right? And it, it says he gives authority over demonic strongholds. Oh, yes. Authority. He give you over demonic strongholds. We already have the authority, but this is, this is authority like... Because your words are hitting harder in the spirit, right? So when you're fasting and praying, God is moving on what you're saying. He's moving much quicker. He's moving like it's it's getting God to move on what you're saying, right? It says that he answers fervent prayers. So it's giving you the uh, authority over demonic strongholds. Like you could command a demon to, like if you fasting and you ain't got no food in your belly and you've been in prayer, you could command, like you could self deliver yourself. Like you could really self deliver yourself because it gives you more authority. It says over demonic strongholds, um, repentance and salvation, right? It's personal victories in your life is gaining heaven's perspective. <clears throat> God's protection and help and commissioned to ministry, right? Commissioned to ministry. He's going to show you when you're fasting, he'll reveal to you. If you're not sure what the will is of God for your life, he'll reveal that to you, right? The Bible say you have not because you ask not, right? So ask him and he asking you shall receive. He'll begin to reveal things to you that you have not known, but you got to ask. You see what I'm saying? He knows what you need, but you have to ask, right? It's kind of like confess your sins one to another. Confess, like confess and believe. Confess in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe. See what I'm saying? You got to confess. So it's it's a, it's an action part to it, right? So, yeah, it's just, you, you just got to, uh, he, he'll begin to show you, show you what, what it is that he's called you to do. He begin to show you what it is that he's called you to do. But again, you got to ask. And he'll show you, guys. He will show you. Right? He will show you. And the, the, the scripture that he gave me for the fast, right, is so crazy because this is the same scripture that he gave me for Get Right With God Ministries, which is Philippians 1 and 6, right? Philippians 1 and 6. Thank you, Jesus. It says, um, <laughs> being confident of God. This very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. 
will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. He which hath began a good work in you is faithful. Oh, yes, he's faithful to complete it until the day that Jesus Christ returns. Oh, yes. Let me get in another version. It says, and I am sure that God who began, who began the good work within you will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until his task within you is finally finished on the day that Jesus Christ returns. So what this scripture is saying, you guys, if God begins to do a work in your life, huh? if God begins to do a work in your life, you better bet your bottom dollar that he's not going to leave you there, but he's going to complete Orebo Shandia, the work that he started in you. See, he ain't like us. We the ones that start stuff and, and don't finish and we stop and we start and we stop. But you better believe that if God begins to do a work in your life, oh, that he is faithful, right? Which means you can count on him. Don't you go by what it looks like, but he's faithful. Oh, yes, he's faithful to complete it. Oh, yes, he is now. He's faithful to complete the work that he started in you. So that situation that you are in right now, that thing has an expiration date. You will not always be like that. Oh, yes, because God is working. He's working, right? He which began, he began a good work in you. Right, he's doing a good work and he's gonna complete that thing. Like he's not gonna leave you there, but you're just there for a season. You're only there for a while. You're only there for a minute, but he's completing that work, right? He gonna start something in you. He started the good thing, but he's going to complete it. Meaning you're, you're gonna continue to move forward. You're gonna continue to move forward. He's perfecting you. He's perfecting you, right? He's not gonna leave you there. He's not gonna leave you there. And I don't care what it looks like, you better believe that God is faithful to complete that good work that he started in you. He's constantly working on us, you guys. You know how when we first come on the video, I say we all are a work in progress. We all are a work in progress. You see what I'm saying? But we progressing is what I'm saying. And it's him, he which hath began, God, he which hath begun. God begun a good work in your life. Like he's going to complete it. Meaning he's not going to leave you there. We all are a work in progress, right? We all are striving to grow in God. We all striving to do better, to learn more about God, right? So he ain't going to leave you there. I'm telling you, he ain't going to leave you there. You're going to look back on that situation, the thing that you're in now, you're going to look back on it and be like, wow, I never saw my way out of that, right? But, but God is working the whole time, from the beginning of time until the day we die. He said, until the day that Jesus Christ returns, which is the end. You see what I'm saying? So he's he's going to complete that work that he started in you. He won't just leave you there. You better believe that right there. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you guys, again, the days of the fast, right? And I hope you guys can be faithful because it's so funny how this scripture is the one that he gave me. And I just now, just now catching it, but um, it says, being confident of this very thing, Philippians 1 and 6, he which hath begun a good work in you, right? It says that he's faithful to complete it. 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 So when I read this and then I, I look at the, it was some things he said on here. He said to those that are faithful, right? To those that are faithful, <clears throat> He said, if you, if you are faithful to this fast, I will break strongholds off of your life. Many of you do secret things that no one knows about. So whatever those things are, he says, if you are faithful to this fast, then he's going to break it off you, right? So if you don't get delivered, now this is a promise here. This is what God says, you guys, right? So if you're not faithful, stay, listen, stay holy, stay away from sin, because if you're fasting and sinning, and not, and even if you're fasting and sinning, and pray, it, it won't work. It won't work. It won't work. That's the key right there. Stay holy. Live holy. Stay away from sin. At least during this fast. Like, well, you should stay away, period. But what I'm saying is, in order for these things to happen in your life, right, you cannot be in sin. You cannot keep living in sin, 
right? You can't. You just can't, you guys. So try to get it together because God is ready to do something. See, it's the title, Change Me, God, Make Me More Like You, right? A lot of you guys, bad attitudes, nasty, mean. Some of you guys curse, masturbate. Like all of those things, God is going to get rid of those things and he's going to make you more like him. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to be perfect, but he's going to help you to be more like him. And that's what it's about, you guys. You know, God doesn't care what well, he does care. But what I'm saying is, as long as we're progressing, right, as long as we're not staying here, struggling in the same area, same area, just staying right here. No, no. As time goes, God wants us to grow, right? He wants us to grow, grow. So he's concerned with progress. You see what I'm saying? doesn't matter how small the progress, but he's concerned with progress, right? He's concerned with progress. So like I said, if you are faithful to this fast, he said, I'll break those strong holes off of your life. Those things that you do in secret that nobody knows about, right? That's what he said, you guys, right? And he says, again, I'm going to give you the spirit of discerning of spirits. That's what he's going to give discerning of spirits, right? But be faithful, you guys, to it, right? Meaning do it just the way you need to do it. Just do it the way it should be done, right? And he said, there'll be many testimonies to those that complete the fast faithfully. That means without messing up, you guys. That means without messing up. So if you mess up and you don't get a test, even if you repent, right? Of course, God will forgive you. Of course he will. But this one, I'm telling you, it's conditional, right? So if you know the rules and you just, you break the rules after knowing them, God will forgive you, of course, but these things where it's conditional, you have to know that you're going to mess it up for yourself, right? If you don't complete it faithfully, right? And at the end of the fast, you'll be like, oh, well, I didn't get what I was, you see what I'm saying? So you have to make sure that you're going to be faithful on the fast and it's seven days from three, I'm sorry, excuse me, from six to six, no meat, and only water. Same way we did it last time. I don't know if you guys did it last time with me. But um, yeah, no meat, only water. The whole six days. No eating from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm going to try to give you guys some scriptures. But make sure that you read your Bible. Make sure that you pray during the fast. Make sure that you read your Bible. Make sure that you pray during the fast. All right? Again, change me, God. Make me more like you. After this fast, you're going to be more like God. He's going to change you. He's going to change the way that you are, the way that you behave. He's even going to give gift of discernment. He says many of you, he's given the gift of discerning of spirits, right? It says that he's going to deliver many of you from laziness and procrastination because it's keeping you from doing his will, right? He says many of you, the things that you're doing in secret, he's going to break those strongholds off you if you're faithful to the fast, right? He said, many of you have bad attitudes and are easily aggravated and angry. He's going to give you guys patience, right? He said, where he's going to take you, you're going to need patience, right? It said, there will be many testimonies to those that complete it faithfully. Complete the fast faithfully, you guys. It ain't going to be easy, no. It ain't going to be easy, you know? Nobody said that it will be easy. It wasn't easy for Jesus. Why would we have it easy? No. Uh-uh. He fasted 40 days, right? So seven days is nothing, but then he didn't eat anything. You see what I'm saying? So this fast God is allowing us to eat. So he just wants 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Don't eat. Pray. Um, Read your Bible. You know what I'm saying? Read your Bible. Pray. Six to six. No food. No meat right? No meat, only water. All right, y'all. I keep saying the same thing because I want you guys to get it. I want you guys to get it. I want you guys to understand. Like, I want you guys to understand it and get your family members to join. You know what I'm saying? Have your family and your friends come join the fast, you know, because you guys, it's, it's, it's only going to benefit all of us. It's only going to benefit all of us, right? And um, I'll say this about the last fast. I, 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 there's so many people that sent me testimonies, right? Very powerful testimonies, I just couldn't, I was like, wow, you know, God is really moving in their lives. But everything since the fast, you see what I'm saying? And and I haven't even been on, but it's more testimonies that have came. Like I got one today. Let me just, let me just read this to you guys and I'm going to, I'm going to let you guys go. But see, there's also people, right? And I'm going to go in a minute, but I, I'm, I just, I want to go in a minute. But let me say this. There's also people, right? Because I try to follow up with you guys sometimes. So those that send me prayer requests, right? If I don't hear anything, then I'll reach back out sometimes if I'm able to, but I reached out to a couple of people and 
You know, I said, well, how's everything going with the request that you sent me? Um, they said, oh, yeah, God moved in my situation. But I had to reach back out to you to, you see what I'm saying? Like, I had to reach back out to you to tell, like, you, you call me for prayer for something, right? And so I pray for you, and I tell you what to do. And then all of these days go by, and, you know, you never reach out. So I'm just reaching out to follow up just to see how things go. Oh, you say, oh, yeah, God moved in my situation. Thank God. But why did I have to reach back out to you to tell me that? You see what I'm saying? So when God does something for you, you have to share the testimony. See, God says it'll be many testimonies to those who do the fast, to do the fast and complete it faithfully. He's going to have many testimonies, but you guys that don't share the testimonies, email me the testimonies, right? Email me the testimonies. Right. So I I, I, I got to reach back out to people just to see how they're doing, just like following up, because I, I love you guys. Right. So when you send me prayer requests, I pray about it. And then, like, again, I didn't hear anything from this lady. And and so I reached out and I said, how's everything going? Um, How did everything go with what you were praying for me to pray with you about? She said, oh, yes, 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 it worked. Thank you so much. God moved on my behalf. And, you know, when I. Those type of things. But sometimes if you don't know, then you know what I'm saying? But they're trying to grieve my spirit a little bit because um, it's like, this is God. Show your appreciation. You know, some people reach out. Man of God, I thank you for the prayers because this is what God did. This is what God did. This is what God did. Bless God. I bless God. I thank God. But when you don't do that, it's like God giving you a testimony. And you don't share it. Right? So it's like, why would God continue to bless you and continue to give you testimonies if you're not sharing the ones that he's giving you. You see what I'm saying? So it just shows appreciate God. You see what I'm saying? Even this is not about me, but even with the seeds, like you guys sow seeds, right? Sow seeds for the fast. So see those things are appreciating God. You see what I'm saying? It's appreciating God for what he does for you. You see what I'm saying? And, and I, I just want to express the importance of that. Because when you glorify God through your story, through your testimony, talk about what he's done in your life. He knows that he can trust you with giving you a testimony because you're going to share it. You're going to glorify his name through what he's done. And then he's going to continue to give you more and more testimonies. But when you keep it to yourself and you don't tell nobody and then somebody got to kind of beat it out of you. And, you know, like it's it's not it's not um <clears throat> that's not how God wants us to behave. You guys, when he does something, like I said, reach out and let me know the testimony so we could glorify God together about it, you know. But I do have one that I wanted to share. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Okay. I got this one today, right? <clears throat> okay. It says, um, listen at this now, you guys. This is so powerful, right? <clears throat> she said, <clears throat> greetings, Brother Jamar. I just wanted to share my testimony with you. She said, I've been keeping it to myself since I participated in the fast, right? So the fast is doing some stuff, you guys, right? I wasn't comfortable sharing it in the comments, right? She said, I just turned 51. I was a complete weed head before the fast, meaning she smoked a lot of weed, right? And she says, um, I smoked more than Snoop Dogg and Smokey on the movie Friday, probably. Y'all know those movies is like hood movies and they, uh, they smoke a lot of weed in the movies. <laughs> she said, I tried to quit on my own many times, but always started back smoking, right? And I don't know who this is for, but one of those, um, secret things that God said he's delivering you from is smoking, right? It's smoking. I mean, there's a part of the fast where it says, um, there's things that you do in secret that nobody else knows. He said, if you do it faithfully, complete the fast, I'll break those strongholds off of you. So as I was reading this, the Lord said it was smoking. Somebody's, them secrets in one of them is smoking, right? And then she said, um, before the fast began, okay, she said, I tried to quit on my own many times and always I started back smoking. She says, so when you told us to pray before the fast began, to give God all the things we wanted him to fix in our lives, we was the first on my list, along with this soul tie that I had been connected to for nine years, right? So remember I said, write something down. And when you go to bed, pray that prayer, Lord, I'm fasting because I need you to deliver me. Or I need you to do this. I need you to do that. Or I need you. And do wake up, do the same thing. Keep declaring it and procrast 
proclaiming it to him, right? Tell him why you're fasting. This is what you need to do. And I believe this is what she's talking about, right? She said for nine years, she'd been connected with somebody with a soul tie. Then she said a spiritual husband is what I called him, <laughs> right? She said after the fast, I have not smoked any weed. I don't even have the desire to smoke it. See, she got her deliverance right there. Oh, yes. She said, the weed man <laughs> said he had been looking for me. Because, <laughs> y'all, I know about the weed man because I used to smoke so much weed way back in the day, too. Right? So, the weed man, he, he looked for your phone call because you his customer. He's looking for your money. Right? So, she said the weed man was looking for me. <laughs> Usually, the, the person that want the weed go look for the weed man, you know. But the weed man was looking for her, trying to find her money. Oh, yes. It said, the weed man said he has been looking for me. It said, as for my spiritual husband, I even think about dialing. Wait. I, he, if he even thinks about dialing my number, I hope his fingers break. God forgive me. She said, but he is deleted out of my life. I don't have those desires for him anymore, Brother Jamar. He's not even my type, right? So I just want to thank you. I'm expecting other things to come to pass also. I don't know how you got in my news feed. Oh yeah, see see what I'm saying? This is God right here. He said, but you have been a blessing in my life. You are a real man of God and I pray that God keeps leading you and teaching you so that you can teach us <clears throat> because every word you share is for me, LOL. Thanks again, your sister in Christ. You see what I'm saying, you guys? So these things, it even lets me know that, okay, I'm helping somebody. You see what I'm saying? That's what it's about, helping one another. You know, but just the way she shared that testimony, that made me tear up because it's like God is so powerful. You know, it's like, wow, it's not even me. You see what I'm saying? It's not me, but it's God doing these things for these people. Like when I say these fasts are orchestrated and God is, she said, I don't know how you popped up on my news feed, right? So her, came, her time of deliverance came. God located her. Popped her up on one of the videos. She joined the fast. She did it faithfully, did it successfully, and she got delivered. You see what I'm saying? So when, when we say fast, God is watching those that do it faithfully, right? Not those that, oh, I just got to get me something to eat, and then I repent, and then I, you know, Lord, I'm so hungry. That means you're instilling your flesh, and you can't control your flesh. That's exactly what that means. You cannot control your flesh, Right. So when you get so hungry to the point where I just got to get me a sandwich, you know, I'll just do it again tomorrow and I fix it and I do it right tomorrow. Oh, I just got to get some coffee. I'm just, you know, I got a headache. Do you know I had a huge, I had, <laughs> I'm laughing with my friend talking to myself because we, um, we both kind of got that same little, well, I think everybody get those headaches, you know what I'm saying? But it's part of the, the sacrifice of the fast. You see what I'm saying? It's part of the sacrifice of the fast, but it's going to hurt. Some things are going to, it's not going to be easy, right? But if you can't control yourself, oh, you got to have soda. You got to have this. You got to have that. And you're breaking the rules of the fast, then why would God, because you're not doing it faithfully. So why would he, you know what I'm saying? Doing what he's promised, right? Oh, well, you know, I'll just restart it tomorrow because, you know, I just I just had a little headache. I couldn't do it. No, that, but that's not showing faithfulness to it. You see what I'm saying? These things are determined by faithfulness. They're going to be done by faithfulness. These strongholds is going to be a faithful a taste, test of your faithfulness, right? It's going to be a test of your faithfulness. And you guys, please don't don't think I'm not. I just bought a bunch of uh, sodas and a bunch of um, uh, juices and a bunch of um, uh, milk and all of that stuff. I just bought a bunch of that stuff and then it popped up about the fast, but I had just bought this stuff a few days ago, you know, and then it popped up about the fast and I wasn't planning on doing it. Oh, oh, I didn't tell y'all when it's Tuesday through Tuesday. Okay. Sorry. Tuesday through Tuesday, Tuesday through Tuesday, Tuesday through Tuesday, Tuesday through Tuesday. So I got a bunch of stuff in there that I want to, I want to, I want to drink my sodas. I want to drink, you know what I'm saying? Like I want to drink my sodas, but I got to only drink water. So it's a sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? It's a sacrifice and God rewards you when you sacrifice. But this testimony right here, you guys, very powerful, very powerful, very powerful. 
So when you guys get testimonies, send them to me, right? So I can read them. I'm going to pin this one up there too because God is so good, you guys. But let me go. This video is much longer than what I had expected, right? So the fast is going to be seven days from next Tuesday. Tuesday coming two days away. Three days away. Yeah, Tuesday, 6 a.m. to next Tuesday, 6 p.m. No break. So it's seven days. Only water and no food between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., right? And no meat. No meat the whole fast, all right? All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to try to come on daily. Uh, once we start the fast, I'm going to try to come on daily. And um, try to come on daily. Give you guys some encouragement and maybe some scriptures or bring a little message. Just something to keep you guys, you know. But I'm going to try to come on daily at 5 o'clock so we can break it all together at 6. You know, just see how you guys are doing on the fast and everything like before. Um, but yeah, get your family members, your friends to join in so we can um, break some strongholds, y'all. So we can break some strongholds. <laughs> no, just kidding. But uh, yeah, the title of the fast he gave me, Change Me God, Make Me More Like You. So he's going he's gonna to make you more like him, right? Change me, God. Make me more like you, all right? All right, you guys, I love you guys. I am Jamar Grimsley. This is Get Right With God. Until next time, I love you guys. Bye-bye.